updates. A day of the week? No, no, it's not that. It's Saturday night. No, oh, Sunday morning. Sorry, I'm completely losing track. I've just um, had the boys in with me. Four little ones saw their mum today. And they're all fully upset, so of course this Especially Jack doesn't really understand why mummy isn't home. Ellie's um makes her chin all here and it's all bleeding, she's still awake. Um this certainly wasn't the vlog we thought it was gonna be when we started. Um sorry I haven't done much for the first well first bits but but it's oh, I just still feel like I've been hit by a freight train. Okay, it's oh, um, if I'm honest, I've been struggling. Uh, it's been hard to keep strong for the kids, for Casey. For Casey's mum, and at the same time, uh, it's just there's that much going through my head. And I've not really known what. Well, I still don't know what day of the week it is properly without thinking for a minute. I'm still struggling to keep tears down. I keep having nightmares. Oh, it's... I think it's just because it was so unexpected. You know, we're... This is baby number four. We've been here. We've done this. We are on. I mean, we've got it. I've got it. Just about accepted that baby number four was going to come. You know, in hospital, which is not really what we wanted. We wanted a home birth. And then the night before, Grace was being induced. She goes into labour. Yeah, yay, brilliant. Yeah, there'll be some bits of when that happened uh, at some point in this video, and then, he, uh, well, you know, Casey will probably give you the more, the better I can, but for me, it just felt like it was suddenly ripped away from us. You know, one minute I'm helping Casey with her contractions, I'm holding her hand, rubbing her back, whatever she needed. And then the next, we're told that there's something very wrong with our daughter because they can't get the heartbeat properly. It would have seemed like seconds later, Casey's been rushed to the hospital with the blue lights near the back of an ambulance. You know, we got up to four centimetres dilated. You know, we thought everything was going fine. Get to hospital. Immediately surrounded by tens of people. Needles going in, lines going in, monitors going on. So in case she's got to stay still, because make the monitors work, and then consultants being called and talked. Well, this is all at two o'clock in the morning when we haven't, you know, I've I've just, that day I've just driven to Birmingham and back, so I, I was shattered. I'd maybe been asleep, what, ten minutes when Katie woke me up to tell me she was in labour? So, now here I am, shattered and exhausted. There's my wife getting told that she's going to have to have a cesarean. And because of the medication she was told to take by the by the midwives, well, chances are she won't be awake for it. 
Her mother injecting her with drugs to stop her having the labour that she wanted. And at this point, I'm. It's all I can do to just stop shouting and want to stop. This isn't what we want. This isn't what we planned. You know, and then they say, oh, you're still only four centimetres dilated. Well, of course, Katie doesn't you're still four centimetres dilated. Who the hell dilates when they're stuck on a bloody bed and not allowed to move? So look, Katie there absolutely, well, I wish she was being strong, but I know inside she was devastated. I mean, just before they wheeled her down, she looked at me and said, sorry. It's like, why are you apologising, Katie? You've done nothing wrong. I mean, you pushed out Kai and he was nine and a half pounds. You could be... You're good at this. Um, I must admit I am finding this hard to talk about, but I think it's important to... Um, Because obviously since it's has happened I've bit more into it and you know, there's lots of information about mums but us dads not so much. I don't get me wrong, mums are important, but I don't know what's you know, what, what's normal but be feeling but I think I'm still in a bit of shock if I'm honest you know my wife's there and like I said they're injecting us to stop the labour I'm told to change into some scrubs I think they're called you know the hospital you thing so I get into them and I'm told to go, well, she's going down. This is all in, what, about an hour? Uh, it feels like uh, I completely lost track of time that night for me. But, you know, we go down to theatre. And I'm told I can't go in. I just can't go in. So that's my wife. Scared out of her wits. Petrified. Even if she won't admit it. How the hell else couldn't you, would you be anything other than petrified? And I'm not there. My one job, my one thing that us men get to do when our children are born is be there for our partners. Why couldn't they? I've never felt so absolutely useless in my life. I could not be there to help her. I couldn't be there to make her feel safe. And then what happens? You know, I'm sitting there like a complete lemon. No idea what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. The staff running walking out of the theatre pay theatre. You know then. Pleasant enough, but it's not their fault. But there I am sitting there feeling like the whole world's just swallowing me up. 
I've just got so many emotions swirling around my head that I didn't know what to do. I couldn't sit, I couldn't stand. I couldn't keep my bloody shoes on that you have to wear because they were digging in me because I got some sort of earthing thing in it to stop static electricity that was digging in. And it felt like years later, although it was probably about an hour, I hear a baby crying. Little did I know at the time it was my baby I had crying. And about five minutes, maybe? I don't know, really. It was a short time later. I got to go and see my daughter and she's there and she's got wires attached to her and tubes and you can see that she's got a great big massive bruise here oh, look, fit little face She just looks so small, even though she's bigger than Jack. But she was smaller than Ellie, smaller than Kai. And there she is with oxygen up her nose and her mouth. Bubbles coming out when she's trying to breathe. I've never been so bloody scared in all my life. I was literally standing there thinking, they're going to tell me she's going to die. I'm not even told Katie this. Well, when she's in hospital, she's got enough to worry about, but, you know, I mean, it may be only been five, ten seconds I was standing there, but I was convinced my daughter was going to die. It's the only time I've ever seen bubbles like that coming out of somebody's mouth. It was me Nan just before she died. And then I don't really get to see much of her. I'm just standing there like a spare part. I might maybe hold her hand a little bit. I can't really remember. And then she's whisked off to in the intensive baby unit. Because she's her blood oxygen levels are really low. But like I said, I was just so bloody scared. You know what I mean? With we're talking oh, four or five. I've lost track of the time. Like I said, it's been five days and I've. Every time I close my eyes, I just see that image of her. My little girl. Just lying there, completely helpless to do anything to help her. And then, like I said, she was whisked away. So I'm basically gonna, hello, this is your daughter, we've never gonna take her away from you again. Go wait outside. And again, this isn't the staff. They're doing their job there. Their priority is my daughter. So it should be. But it's so, it's so hard. But then, then 
Oh, about 20 minutes later. I've just been wandering around the, the room where I, where just a few, well, an hour, I don't know, however long. Uh, a room where oh, I saw Katie just walking around. They get called to say that Katie's coming down. So I go and meet her trolley and she's barely conscious from the operation. The first thing she does grabs my hand tells me she loves me and she's sorry. What's she apologising for? What on earth was she apologising for? She's done nothing wrong. Look at that, it's... Uh, hard for me to talk about, I just feel that it might be helpful for other men out there going through something similar to know that there is no right or wrong way to feel, this is just how I feel. And like I said, this is it's part of a week later and I'm still like this. But, she apologise. And she asks how her daughter is. And I just don't know how to answer that question. How do you answer that to somebody who's coming out of anaesthetic? That you don't know how your daughter is. I have no idea. You know. Not good is the only thing that would be the right answer. Of course I can't tell her that. But I tell her that, that, sense that she's just been taken to be checked on because they just want to make sure that everything's okay. And they wheel Katie back into the back into the delivery room. I'm not really sure why she would put that. I'm assuming there's nowhere else to go. But and then I get all my member of staff. Again, I'm not learning them because obviously they're just trying to do their jobs. Get told that if you're going to get something to eat, now would be the time because they don't. You don't know when you're next get a chance. As you can imagine, I can't give a flying fig about food at this point. In the back of my head, all I can hear is Katie telling me I've got to eat. I've got to keep my strength up. So then I go and get something to eat. Because by this time it's... Well, I have no idea. I'm guessing lunchtime, otherwise the restaurant thing wouldn't be open. You know, and then while I'm there, I'm... Letting Katie's mum know what's happening and my, my nan and my grandmother. I don't really tell them anything, I've really got a clue. I know my daughter's in special care. I know that Katie's okay, so at least that's one thing. So after I had a few minutes, cleared my head up to eat. I go back up to the ward, go back up to the livery suite, hearing other mothers giving birth, or feeling petrified for my own. Just at this 
At this point, I realise I can't remember if I can remember which room the cage is in. Was it that much of a daze? So I think they showed me too much. It's a bit more awake. And then they asked me if I wanted to come and see my daughter. I could barely walk. I didn't know what I was going to be walking into. I was scared to ask. So I go and see her. I mean, she wasn't in one of these sort of incubatory things. She was in a more normal car, so you'll see some pictures. Heated. You know, heated mattress underneath and the heat lamp above. And there she is. Still bubbling at the mouth. Stickers all over her chest to read her heart. Poor little mites just lying there, struggling to breathe. Oxygen. For her face. We're putting a feeding tube in her as so I walk in. To get told that during the birth she'd swallowed faecal matter as well as amniotic. Is it amniotic? The fluid that's around. Well, around. And that she's got raised um, infection markers. So it's, there she is, getting so small, so fragile, just lying there. But at least I, I understood the bubbles because she's. This and the trend, they've given us some medication that's helping to bring up all the fluid in our lungs. And then they say that she's got low blood glucose levels, so they're having to give her glucose through a drip. Poor little mites, arms all have holes, or, you know, pin pricks all over because they haven't been able to find a vein they can use. Seems to be the story of her weeks, poor little mite. So there she is. And the first thing she does when she realises that I'm holding her, that my hand's by her, she grabs it. She grabs onto Daddy's finger with every mite of strength she's got. If to say, Daddy, I'm here. I felt my heart melt at that moment. As a dad, every every child I've ever seen brought into this world has always been that moment. Uh, and with Lily, it was then. Jack, it was the first time I fed him and he threw up all over me. Funny how you remember these things. With, with, with Ellie, it's when the first time she says, because you know, with Ellie with her eyes, it was the, I picked her up for the first time. And this was, you know, um, she was only a few seconds old, I just got a cord. I picked her up and go for this great big hug. And she popped me on the nose with her feet, with her fist. And Kai, he literally just came out of the cage, see? <laughs> and he stuck his tongue out at me. It's funny how you remember these things.
Someone was there. Someone was there with her for about an hour. Just holding her hand. Trying not to cry. Trying to figure out what the hell was the matter. Both with her hand and both with her the end, mate. Knowing I needed to come down to Katie like this, she needed me to be useful. So if I can't do my job as a husband and as a father, then... Somehow I managed to pull myself together. Gave her a big kiss. Came down to see Katie. By this point was more awake. And told her everything that I knew what was happening because obviously at this point she was with it enough to be told the truth. I don't like I don't like keeping things from Katie if I don't have to. Especially about the kids. You just don't. You just don't keep things from your partner about the kids. And that was uh, my daughter's birthday. So after me and Katie had Try to get her heads round everything. I was basically told that it would be a, a good time to uh, hurry to come home. Because by this point, I was nervous a bit, I was done. Emotionally, physically, I'd been awake. Oh. Yeah, well, getting well onto. Th 30 odd hours. I don't do well. Because I'd gone up at like 4 o'clock the day before. Because I'd have to go down to Birmingham to pick up mother in law. And I didn't have my cat. I'd come in, on, I'd come in an ambulance. And I'm like, really, we like. It's. Best part of 40 miles from where we lived at the hospital. Uh, fortunately, um, yeah, little Kai's made a really good friend in uh, school this year and we've gone quite well with uh, his parents. And uh, his, his friend, me, Kai's friend's mother had to. Um, Come and pick me up in my car. Came back and um, gave all the kids the biggest hugs I could give them. Answered about 20 million questions from Kai. And uh, Try to get some sleep because I was just done. Then realised I couldn't, so I might as well spend the time with the kids. Um, so I got them bathed and washed and to bed. Uh, Katie's mum had done me something to eat. I couldn't tell you what it is because I can't remember, but I ate that. Katie's um, mum uh, went off to the caravan to sleep in there to give me, my, give me and the kids some space, which was petrified about at the time, but it was, it was the right thing. No, well, the kids could sleep. So, well, Ali could sleep because. Well, I used to would sleep loosely, but Ali, Ali dozed off probably because of a medication. Boys couldn't. 
The boys have been having trouble sleeping. So I blame them. I mean, why else do you think I'm recording this video at like one o'clock in the morning? But the boys that night have slept in here with me. Well, slept's probably putting a bit loosely. The boys and me just laying in this bed, just cuddling and talking. Jack dropped off with his arms round me. Very unusual for Jack. We, we know Jack loves us and he'll come up for a cuddle occasionally, but prolonged cuddles isn't a Jack thing. Oh, hang on, I um, just realised I've been talking for half an hour now. Apart from anything, it's just that hard to talk about. I i been wanting to record this now, like I said, since that night it happened, and this is the first night I felt I could. I haven't even been able to talk about this with Katie. This is as much for me getting off my chest as it's for you guys to watch. I don't even know how much of this will make it in the video. Even if it doesn't, Katie needs to meet Katie that will see it. If you if your wife can't see you at your lowest then what's the point of the relationship? So I'll tell you now when Katie gets home there isn't gonna be a strong and a weak one. We're both emotionally shot at the moment. We're both going to have to heal each other. Not for the first time. I mean, in a lot of ways, it's a bit like when we found out with Ellie with her sight, but so, so much worse. Just, just a shock. And like I said, wouldn't you? <sighs> oh, that's just in my hand. Wouldn't you? See your daughter and you, you know, literally she's like a few minutes old and you think she's going to die. That stays with you. Boys, our kids have been brilliant. I, I've never known Jack be so affectionate. But I think it's because he knows it's what I need. I need the cuddles. And then, well, for how long this video has gone on for now, I don't think you really need to know the internet, but I used to know I've been running up and down the hospital all week. Sleeps. Well, I, have, I had one good night's sleep since. But I was literally dead to the world. I mean, I'd set alarms to put the car on charge because of getting the cheaper electricity at after half past twelve. I just slept straight through it. So did the boys. No one woke up to it. I think I think there could have been a gas explosion in the house and none of us would have woken up. We were just that tired. Because every time I close my eyes, I'm seeing my daughter. All those tubes. And I feel the emotion I felt to that moment when I thought she was going to die. It's just making me you not know, want to even attempt to go to sleep. I know I have to, but I know I'm going to dream about it.
But at the same time, no, there's nothing I can do about it at the moment. I'm just going to get my wife home. Get my wife and my daughter home. Get, get my daughter in her bed. Get my wife back here. Where she belongs. With her family. Where she'll get better. Oh. Yeah, tonight's record takes well. Oh. No, I'm not sure what time it is. It, it's after midnight and the boys have already just gone to bed. I saw Katie this afternoon and it's the days that <sighs> Oh, the days they don't see Katie, they sleep better. The days they see her, they're always upset that evening. Can't blame them, they just want their mummy home. I mean, I'll put some bit showing today if I think about it. Katie's moved into uh, out of the, you know, into a normal ward. Not that there's anyone else on it. They've not said anything, but I just get the impression they're very short-staffed. Because it feels like half of the... It feels like over half the beds are just not available. <sighs> she's, she's a strong one. I've fed her twice now while they've been having blood taken and she doesn't no crying. No screaming. So I said, if I've got milk, you do what you need to do, people. I'm happy. Oh. I mean she's even had to have a drip. You know, the because she's lost that she's her veins are that difficult that they've had to use her umbilical cord or some line in for sort of running out and even that didn't last long does it so now I'm used to you know a lot of the children you know that much umbilical well not my stand about that much because Guess it doesn't last long because she's on some of antibiotics. So will be for another few days. Uh, she had to. So, so she tested positive for sepsis, but it was only one test that tested positive. The next one was negative, so it was now a suspected sepsis. So Over my head. Normally I research these things so I'm blue in the face, but I've just, if I'm honest, I'm scared to. I don't, I, I don't think I could handle looking at, especially with sepsis. But if you can hear me, she's wide awake. I've checked on her. She's just playing. <laughs> Sepsis is a bit close to home in this family at the moment. Oh, so. So me and the boys just had a cuddle tonight. Watched the, um, the latest episode of um, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Well, we watched this crossover one first. I knew they'd like that because... Um, my son quite likes Lower Decks. Well, I have to be very careful because there's quite a few that are not appropriate for him to watch. But I quite like it too, so. But that episode's just so funny. And then we just watched the musical episode. Not that I'm guessing much, much of our audience crosses over with Star Trek, but... 
it's nice to have them cuddled up to me watching something on, on my laptop. It, it kind of felt like a normal thing for a family to do, although oh, we've never watched a film in bed before. I normally watch it on the settee, but I've been going to bed the same time as the children have. Not really getting much done, just lying here really, but hoping I'll fall asleep. Oh, I hope this doesn't last for long. I have felt this way before, and it didn't last, it did last a long time, and that was with hope. Found equally useless then. I just hope the fact that Lily's here will help. When I'm holding her, or when I'm holding Katie, I do feel better. I do feel me. But here, no. I feel like I've got the weight of, well, so there's a scene in Encanto where the, the strong sister's got the house and everything else on her back. That's about how I feel now. But fingers crossed it won't last long. But hopefully Katie will be home Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday. Hopefully, because um, my wife's mother's got to go on Thursday. I'd like her to spend some time with her grandchild and her daughter. I'm looking forward to that. Is he coming home? I promised the children a big cake to celebrate Lily's homecoming. Well, you know, stop rambling on now. I will um, catch you up later, hopefully, um, in a more happy frame of mind. Like I said, I've been meaning to record this for days. I mean, what's the point of vlogging your life if you can't, if you, if you skip out of the bad? And then I feel guilty for thinking of Lily's birth as being the bad, but <laughs> what else do you call it? We wanted a nice home birth. Lots of skin to skin comment. I mean, Katie didn't even see Lily until she was over 24 hours old. I mean, what kind of screwed up situation is it when the dad gets to hold the child first? I shouldn't hold the baby first. I've not, had, I've not carried Lily for nine months. I've not had the bad back. A bladder the size of a pea. Not being able to sleep because I can't get comfy in bed. I don't know that. So why should I get older first? It's Katie's gone through all that. She should only be holding her first. But then, if I hadn't have held her, she wouldn't have had a cuddle for two days. So even when Katie got to see her, she couldn't give her a cuddle. <coughs> but she's on the mend now, no tubes, feeding, <laughs> feeding like an Upton Millard. 
finish the whole of the bottle today. She's only supposed to have between 40 and 50. She's like, nah, I'll have 60. That's me, girl. And she's not so regurgitating it or being sick with it like some children. Ellie was good at that. Jack was as well when he was younger. You know, when he was first born. Uh, but she's a fighter. She's got her mum's pain threshold. And she's absolutely perfect. All my kids are. I mean, we might wish that Ellie doesn't have her problems and that Jack didn't have his, but couldn't change them. Change them, they wouldn't be the children we love. Right, well, I'm going to go, because like I said, it's been... <laughs> it might include all this... You know, I'm going to all edit this, whether it'll be me or Katie, but I've been talking for 45 minutes now. So I'll uh, catch you all up in a bit. I think this vlogs until Lily gets home, but it might get split up, I don't... I don't know, I'm not thinking about it, if I'm honest. I'll catch you in a bit.